Some very interesting games, got brand new gameplay and info at China Joy that you have to put on your radar, especially if you like open world games. I'm very intrigued by this dark fantasy title and I also saw one of the most impressive boss fights I've seen since Final Fantasy 16. But let's start with Project Jin Yue, an open world action RPG set in the late Ming Dynasty which ran from 1368 to 1644. The word Jin Yue I think tells us a lot about the story as it's the name of the Chinese secret police who were active during the Ming Dynasty. Basically, they operated above the law and were able to arrest and interrogate enemies of the state without any due process. So not sure if we're joining this faction or fighting against them, but it's a very interesting theme for a story. At its core, Jin Yue is an action RPG though, and luckily the fighting in the game is looking very solid. It's very fast-paced, giving you access to a wide variety of weapons, like we see swords, Spears, dual swords and even barehanded martial arts techniques and you can block, dodge and parry enemy attacks as well. That includes ranged attacks by the way as you can see during this boss fight footage. A perfect block even seems to trigger a window of slow motion as well giving you ample time to respond with a counter attack. While the game seems grounded so far with realistic environments and enemies, boss fights do have this nice flair to them with some Final Fantasy 16 esque mid boss fight cutscenes to make the action even more stylish. And while the basics of combat are nothing we haven't seen before, the skill menu does show a wide variety of attacks you can unlock. It actually betrays a lot of complexity and depth to the combat system as even the frame data of an attack is included in the description. Not sure what all the arrows mean, I think it shows which moves can combo into which other ones and if that is true, well it looks like you can go pretty crazy. But open combat is not your only option in Jin Yue as you can also use stealth to your advantage. You you can sneak up on an enemy to instantly kill them from behind and even higher up enemies aren't safe as you can jump pretty high and run up, across and even around walls to get the edge on enemies. I'm guessing there are skills to improve stealth too but we at least know there are stats related to it on your gear. Jin Yue actually has some very in-depth looking RPG mechanics behind its action based combat. As you can see here there are many of the traditional RPG stats related to defense or stamina consumption but you also have stats related to stealth and charm, hinting that there are multiple playstyles and approaches to missions. And by the way, we used Google Image Translate to translate the Chinese menu, so that is what you're seeing here. You'll likely find gear while exploring or from defeated enemies, but we can also see the character buy a weapon off a vendor. And weapons can actually consist of multiple parts too, like the hilt, the guard and the blade of a sword. I'm hoping that also means they can be mixed and matched like you could in Lies of Peace, so we can create our own amazing weapons. Project Jin Yue is planned to release on PS5 as it is of course part of Sony's China Hero Project. Now let's look at more new interesting games that will be coming to the west. Of course a like on the video would be awesome and subscribe for more coverage on these games. Another really interesting title that revealed a ton of new info at China Joy is Unending Dawn. I was immediately drawn in by the boss designs, there are some really epic looking big creatures here with even more impressive second phases. Like this guy just casually grows a shadow monster out of his back, but there is a lot more to be excited about. Unending Dawn is an action RPG set in a sort of post-apocalyptic fantasy setting where a false prophecy has doomed the world and now it's your job to try and save it. From the looks of it the main focus will be on combat which has taken a lot of inspiration from the parry based combat of Sekiro and Lies of P. Enemies have a poise meter under their health that depletes when you hit them or when you parry their attacks. Depleting an enemy's poise completely opens up their defenses for a couple of seconds with shield wielding enemies even dropping the shield the first time you break their poise. You can then trigger a powerful finisher on them, go ham with your many different ground and air combos or switch to a different character. Because yes, Unending Dawn has multiple playable characters, each with their own set of customizable skills and abilities. Now I'm not sure if you'll recruit party members through the course of quests or if it involves a Genshin like gacha system to unlock new characters. Swapping party members in combat is at least similar to Genshin with you having a single playable character on the field and the ability to quick swap to another one. You 
You can even do so with a special combo to keep the flow of combat going and it looks pretty badass too. So far we've only seen two playable characters though, the sword wielding one that I'm guessing is the protagonist and the taller spear wielding character who was heavily featured in the Flame of Faith trailer. That trailer also does a good job of showing the similarities to other Souls-like games as there are plenty of traps, narrow and high up rafters you need to navigate and breaking floors that led you straight into an enemy ambush. And I have to say even with the more stylized graphics some of these environments look very eerie, exactly the vibe a post-apocalyptic fantasy world should give. They should be a lot easier to navigate than your average Souls level though as the characters in Unending Dawn are pretty agile. They can perform multiple back-to-back -back air dashes which allows you to cover a lot of ground very quickly. The wide open areas also suggest quite a lot of content to keep you playing. Unending Dawn is planned to release on PS5, iOS and Android. But the most impressive game and story from China Joy has to be Lost Soul aside. What started as a solo project by developer Yang Bing has grown into a Sony backed production and the result is really impressive. It's going to be an open world title so that already sets some pretty high expectations when it comes to scale and content. Visually the game is definitely the most striking out of the ones we've discussed with lightning fast combat and a ton of effects going off on screen at once. The long and diverse combos really make me think of something like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry and last year's China Joy demo included a style based scoring system common in those games too. This year's showing didn't include that although I think it's disabled in the HUD and not actually removed from the game but it did give us a closer look at the game's training arena. We can see the main character Kaiser. I hope I pronounced that right by the way but he can use sword attack also has a variety of powerful looking spells at his disposal and a badass finisher you can trigger after breaking an enemy's poise. You can also see the player practicing his parries and dodges with a perfect dodge spawning in a floating orb that follows Kaiser around. I'm pretty sure you then spend these on this lightning charged gap closer which really turns boss fights into an almost dance like encounter. Like you, bosses are very fast and highly aggressive so having a way to quickly close the distance means you can return the favor. If you play it well, fights almost end up looking like something from DBC with you and the boss constantly flying at each other, exchanging melee blows and ranged attacks. You can expand Kaiser's moveset even more by finding different weapons as you can seamlessly see him switch between a regular sword and a massive greatsword in the heat of combat. Not sure if it will be an RPG-like system where you'll find a ton of different weapons but considering the earlier comparison to DMC, I think it's more likely that you get a couple of cool weapons weapons with some really exciting movesets. And maybe we even get to use some of the boss weapons like this guy's infinitely multiplying golden sword that's definitely on my wish list. But while the main focus of the game appears to be on combat, there's also a little bit of platforming involved, both to progress or to grab some extra items that are hidden out of reach. Of course makes sense to keep the gameplay varied in the open world. Lost Soul Aside has been in development for a long time with no proper release date yet, but we do know the game will be releasing on PC and PlayStation 5. Let me know which of these games looks the most exciting to you, subscribe for more videos on these games and leave a like on this one. You can also watch our previous video on big upcoming open world games by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.